Let's head to Parliament and Evans. After the long wait, tonight Parliament has made history, passing the Affirmative Action Bill into law. The bill, which has been in and out of Parliament for several years, has finally been passed unanimously by the House. We can listen to Gender Minister Dakua Newman move the motion for the passage and the vote in the House. That the Affirmative Action Gender Equity Bill 2024 be now... Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that the Affirmative Action Gender Equity Bill 2024 be now read the third time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I so move. Thank you. Affirmative Action Gender Equity Act 2024. I put a question. Honorable members, those in favor of the third reading of the bill say aye. Those against say no. Honorable members, the ayes have it. The Affirmative Action Gender Equality Bill 2024, Bill 2024, now Affirmative Action Gender Equity Act 2024, duly read the third time and passed. An act to provide for affirmative action for gender equity in the public and in the public and private sectors and for related matters. Well, Speaker of Parliament Aban Babin says there's still more to be done to ensure that there is true equity among the genders. Up at the public gallery, and it's not just today, they have been with us throughout. It's not been easy. We need to move together. It is not a bill for just women. It's a bill for all of us. It's a bill for development. This is the first stage. We have passed the law. We have to appropriate adequate resources for the ministry to lead the implementation of the provisions that we have enacted. So we've just started. Don't let's celebrate and don't really put in place the vision that we have created for the country. But more importantly, I hope that members will commit themselves to the constitutional reforms. We need to do more there to be able to create this free and just society we are looking for, to liberate more of our women, to be able to support us, to be able to develop Mother Ghana. With this, I thank all of you for your support. I mean, the good Lord continue to bless Ghana. And that's the speaker after the passage of the Affirmative Action Bill. Let's bring in Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent Kweku Asante uh, joining us on the line. So Kweku, earlier uh, during one of the debates on the bill, uh, there were some concerns raised, especially by the former minority leader. Were all these issues addressed, you say? Well, yes, most of them were addressed. In fact, there were provisions in the Affirmative Action Bill that were put before the House that required media houses to portray uh, women in a positive light. There were provisions that required political parties to ensure that they filled more female candidates in certain respects, even so, going so far as calling certain seats safe seats. The argument was made on the floor that the Constitution does not allow that for political parties to foist female candidates on specific constituencies and all that. So generally, those issues were taken care of in several amendments. In fact, yesterday, the House sat up until midnight yesterday, and they were working on the Affirmative Action Bill, trying to dot all the I's and cross the T's ahead of the passage this morning. And so all these issues now out of the way, it is expected from the indication I'm getting from the minister herself and other persons, they do not, ex they do not expect that any person will be going to the Supreme Court or any, 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 any forum whatsoever to go and seek to strike out this bill. They say that this is a win for equity and equality, and they expect that it will land on the desk of the president as soon as this week or perhaps early next week for the president to sign it into law once parliament has done its job. Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent Kweku Asante, of course, a lot happening in Parliament. We'll return uh, to Kweku Asante for more from Parliament. But let's dig in more on this particular bill. And we've been joined on the phone by convener of the AA coalition, Sheila Minkaprem. We are grateful uh, for your time here on Newsnight. Definitely has been a long time coming, but it's finally here. Guess you're happy now. Yes, I'm very, very happy. I'm very excited. 
for this um, move, for the passage of this particular bill. We are hoping that it will make a, beginning to you know, make a difference when it comes to gender equality. Mm. But this is a bill that has been fraught with a lot of misconception and misinformation. How are you hoping uh, to cure that perception that this particular law will give women an unfair advantage over men? Um, I know that those are some of the criticisms that came along the way as we, the bill was being processed and we were doing advocacy on it. But it will, I don't believe that it will. The way our bill is structured, it's structured in such a way that there are indicators at the back of the law where all sectors, both the public sector and private sector, are supposed to comply with. And the way it's structured, once we reach parity, then the programs will stop. You know, this law is based on Article 17.4 of the Constitution. Basically, Article 17 says there should be no discrimination on the basis of gender. And 17.4 says that where historically it's been found that you know, there's discrimination against one gender, there's nothing wrong if Parliament passes a law to bring in policies and programs which will try to address the imbalance. So the, the law is structured in such a way that once the imbalance is addressed in a particular sector, that program has to end. So I don't think that it will lead to you know, women getting, I mean, what, like a reversal, you know, a lot of little about men, no. It's a gradual thing which will take us to parity, and once we reach parity, the program will stop. So I believe that it's a well-structured law. Well, now that it's been, it's been passed, though, the next step is actually assenting to it. Are you confident that it will be assented to by the president, hopefully, without having to apply any more pressure for that to happen? Yes, I believe that having, you know, uh, our biggest issue was it passing through parliament. Um, it's passed through parliament. A few changes have occurred. Some you are happy with, some you are not very happy with. But we have a law. That's the key thing. We think that Getting a presidential assent should not be too difficult because we believe that the president should be in line with this. Remember, he said gender champion. And so we'll be happy if this law... I think I was part of a delegation that met with the president at a point during the advocacy process. And he indicated that he was, this was a law which was very important. And um, so I believe that he will assent to it. But we will not stop our advocacy until it has been assented to. We believe that he's in support of it. Grateful. Uh, we are grateful. I'm sure congratulations is in order. Thank you so much uh, for your time here on Newsnight. That's Sheila Minka Premo, convener. Thank you very much. Affirmative Action Coalition.